Hey y'all, this video is a quick introduction to how to read plays. Some of you may be huge drama nerds who already know all this, but others of you might need some guidance to understand what you're seeing on the page, especially when you're looking at an ancient Greek play. We won't go into the history of the genre or form too much, but if you're interested in where drama comes from, you can watch the video that's popped up on the screen already. Let's get started. So for starters, what you see on the page when you read a play is called a script. Scripts are what the actors and crew memorize to bring the play to life in front of the audience. In other words, the play is what you see on the stage, while the script is what you see on the page. Scripts are meant for actors to read, interpret, and perform. As a result, you'll need to be an even more active reader than usual. To really understand a play, read it like an actor. Try to read it out loud with others to play the different parts or maybe using different voices for different characters. Also try to read it all in one sitting, imagining the space, place, costumes, action, and actors as you go. That way you'll get a stronger sense of what the play would be like on the stage. You might even cast certain famous actors or people you know to play different parts. You don't have to play dress up and put on costumes, but it might help you to do some research and see what costumes would have been worn when the play was originally written. The format of a script helps you do that. After the title, most plays start with a short mention or description of the setting, plus a list of characters and their descriptions. If not, you can look up this background info. As I said before, you might use the internet to find pictures of the setting, during that time or see who has played which roles in the past. After the second setting and characters, many non-ancient plays will jump right into the action. Newer plays are usually broken down into acts and scenes, though this differs from culture to culture. Each scene takes place in a different location. As the name implies, a new scene means a change of background scenery maybe from a beach to a living room or a ship's deck. We witness each scene in the time it would take in real life, just a few minutes. On the other hand, time passes between acts. Act two may take place hours, days, months, or even years after act one. And act two may use the same locations as before or different ones. In general, acts represent different parts of the story's plot the rising action, crisis, and falling action, or beginning, middle, and end. Some ancient Greeks and Renaissance French writers believed in following the three unities for their play. In other words, the play would present a single action taking place in a single place over the course of a single day. There was no scenery moving, just maybe different lighting, like an episode of the TV show 24, if it took place in one room. However, many other cultures and writers did not and do not worry about this kind of unity. Once the play begins, the characters' names are usually listed in all caps or some other way that calls attention to them, so you can easily know who's speaking when. You'll also see some parts written in lowercase letters, italicized, and in parentheses. These are the stage directions and they tell the actors what to do and where to be on the stage. They aren't meant to be spoken out loud, but they do need to be read, visualized, and acted out. Most good dramatic writers don't describe every little action, so you'll have to imagine what the characters are doing, especially when they're not speaking. This is where reading the play with others or watching a performance along with your reading can help a lot. You can also take clues from the dialogue since lines like, ow, probably mean that one character hit, stabbed, or pinched someone. Ancient Greek plays are a little different because they often include a chorus or a group of side characters who speak during the play. The chorus can work like an all-knowing narrator who helps guide the audience through the experience, but doesn't really interact with the main characters. Other choruses are groups of characters who participate in the action and each member has their own personality and point of view. These types of choruses often make wise or funny comments and provide comic relief for the audience. 
Still other Greek plays have two choruses that represent opposing points of view. One called the strophe represents one side of the conflict, while the antistrophe speaks for the other side or point of view. If you see the terms strophe and antistrophe in a Greek play or anywhere else, that's what they mean. Now that you know what to expect, it's time to dive in. As you read, consider and try out different ways to say and hear a line, especially in verse dramas. Verse dramas are plays written in poetry, usually rhyming. So you'll need to decide, is the character serious, sarcastic, surprised, in pain? Just because it rhymes doesn't mean they're playing around. Plays are often about the tension between what we show on the outside and what we mean on the inside. So try to see how each character feels within. You can also watch a performance to get an idea of how others interpret the action and dialogue, but don't let their vision overtake yours. Imagine for yourself and ask yourself, why did they do it that way? How would you do it? 